I'll serve you. I'll serve you with all I am. I'll serve you. 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 With all I am, I'll serve you. So much I'll give my all. So Lord, we honor your name. We give you glory for who you are. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy to be adored in this place. We are not faced by the challenges we face because we have faith in you. Our hope is in your name. We're not faced when the enemy comes in like a flood because we know your spirit will raise a standard against it. We're not faced when the fowler tries to ensnare us. We are not faced because you're the God that has rescued us even from the fowler's snare. The one who tried to ensnare us was ensnared by their own snare because of you. We love you not because we can love you but because you loved us first. We love you because you teach us how to love. And when we love, we proclaim your truth. That's why we give our all to serve you. Everything we are, everything we hope to be, we give it all to you. To the glory of your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. And everybody declare amen. Even you who are on the stream, you are joining us online. We know we had a challenge earlier and you are patient with us and you have stayed with us and you're still here. We honor God for you, for joining us online, for bearing with, with us, even New Church Extended Family, who wish you were here already in person. Um, I would like to ask you to let us know where you're watching us from, who would like to welcome you in a special way and would like to just shout out your location where you're watching from and would like to thank you, Church Extended Family, uh, on la- our online uh, campus and also those who join us in person for bearing with us in these trying times where we have been going through so much as uh, as humanity with the challenges of um, the pandemic and uh, understanding and learning virtual ways um, we are only learning now to harness these things so that we are able to ensure that um, our, our worship experience is seamless. I'd like for you to go to the book of Matthew chapter 25. I hope that with the time we have, we'll be able to deal with this because I've got 16 verses to read. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 14 to verse 30. I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Help me, Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 14 um, to verse number 30. For the, uh, from verse number 14. Uh, For the kingdom of heaven is uh, as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. 15, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he, verse 18, but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Verse 20, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou didst unto me, deliverest unto me five talents. 
Behold, I've gained beside them five talents more. Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Verse 22, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Verse 23, his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Verse 24, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Take what is yours. Verse 26, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful man, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. 28, take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Verse 29, For unto every man that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Verse 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into out, outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Father, the entrance of your word bringeth forth light. I pray, Lord, that I may decrease in this moment. My desires, my experience, my knowledge, my own wisdom may decrease right now. My personality may decrease right now. That your personality, your wisdom, your desires, your design, your perfect will may be revealed through me. As I open my mouth wide, fill it with your with the oracles of God. Fill it with only your will. That at the end of the day, we leave this place knowing, we close off the stream knowing what it is we must do, the instruction from the very throne of grace. So Lord, we honor you and we bless you and we pray, Spirit of the living God, speak now as only you can. To the glory of the Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. prayed, amen. I'll be preaching, I'll be speaking to you as the Spirit of the Lord shall guide under the title, Subjects, Stewards, and Sons. I wish you could put that in the comments, Subjects, Stewards, and Sons. Oh Lord, this is going to get good in just a moment. Jesus painting a picture of what the kingdom of God is begins to show us that there is a need or a requirement for you to take up responsibility. I'd like for you to put that in the comments. Take up responsibility. It is imperative that if you're going to be a kingdom citizen, you have to take up responsibility. You have to be able to respond to the will of the king of this kingdom, the Lord Jesus Christ, and be able to execute this will to the end that you are found to be pleasing to the king. In order for you to enjoy the, 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 the sovereignty and power and protection of the kingdom of heaven, you ought to understand that there is a responsibility for you to yield to him. There is a responsibility for you to say yes to him. There is a responsibility or there is a demand placed on you to obey him. 
a demand placed on you to say yes to him. A demand placed on you to give your all to him. As we were singing, you loved us so much. You gave your all to save us. You gave your all, your very life to save us. That's why we love you so much. We'll give our all to serve you. And so we learn from him how to serve and therefore serve. As he served his father, we serve him. And therefore we understand as Jesus begins to paint this picture that um, the kingdom of, kingdom of heaven is like a man, a ruler, a man, a king, a man who's in charge, a man uh, who owns his domain, uh, is traveling into a far country. And the greatest thing Jesus could do for us uh, uh, since he resurrected from the dead was to go back to the Father. Was to go and sit at the right hand of the Father. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. After having been given all power in heaven and in earth. And then as he sits at the right hand of the Father, he includes me and you in that seat. And he emboldens us with his power, empowers us with his power to be able to execute his will in the earth. So that we can, by the power bestowed upon us, become ambassadors of him. So that wherever we go, we represent the kingdom of heaven. And how we do that is we access the power of heaven, the power of our kingdom in such a way that we are able to display it, uh, show it off and prove it even to doubters. And so, like a man traveling, the greatest thing Jesus did for us since resurrection, since his death on the cross, was to leave us. But as he left us, he promised, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will entreat my father to send another comforter who will teach you all things and bring to remembrance the things that I taught you. So with you, you carry a reminder, the Holy Spirit, a comforter, the Holy Spirit, who reminds you of the words of Jesus, who reminds you of the will of the Father. And outside of that, he also teaches you all things. Remember Jesus saying in John, there are certain things I cannot even teach you because you're not ready for them. The Holy Spirit is here to help us and learn our ways and learn his ways. Learn and learn our ways and learn the ways of the flesh and learn the ways of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And so it's like a man traveling to a far country. And before he travels, he gathers us together. Because as he gathers his disciples together, you are included there. You may not have been there physically yet. The reason why it's recorded is so that you may know that it includes you. That you are included. And he gathers his servants together and he, what does he do in Tlavotelo? He delivers his goods to them. Before Jesus ascends to the Father, he delivers his goods to us. Read, read, read uh, Mark chapter 16 from verse 15. Go ye therefore into all the world. He could not send us to go into the world without delivering the goods to us. As he sends us to give us, gives us the great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And whosoever believes shall, uh, uh, and, and you're laying hands on them. If they're sick, they're delivered. If they're, they're, they're blind, their eyes are opened. And uh, 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 these signs shall follow them that believe. He's actually talking about the portion of goods that befell you, Mabongi. The portion of goods that befell you, Mkadesh. The portion of goods that befell you who are watching online. So you may have been struggling for things. You may have been struggling for purpose. Saying, I don't know my purpose. Help me find my purpose. I am looking for my purpose. I've tried everything. I've studied something. I'm not happy with it. I'm looking for purpose and you can't find it. I came to tell you your purpose is to win souls. In the sphere of influence where you are located. You are there to win souls. You are there to represent Christ in the workplace, on the job, in your business, on the road, with your music, with your songwriting, with your graphics, with your coding. Everywhere you are, you are supposed to be representing the will and the design and the desire of your king as an ambassador. And so, the first thing we realize is that before the, the master departs, he allocates 
his goods. I need you to know if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, you have been allocated with goods. Empowered with goods that enable you to fulfill his purpose through you. And if you have been sitting on your hands, sitting on your spear, making all kinds of excuses, here is the word of the Lord today. You have no reason to wait for equipment. You have no reason to wait for supernatural power. You have no reason to wait for money. You have no reason to wait for people to come and help you. Because the goods that belong to you, all things that pertain to life and godliness, the goods that belong to you, he already gave. And many of us that are waiting on God to do something. I'm just waiting on God to make a move. Then I'll go. Uh, what, where God sent me to go, I will go. The moment God says uh, uh, something new, then I will go. I need another sign. God says, I have already given all the goods. I have already given all things that pertain to life and godliness in order for you to feel, fulfill my kingdom purpose. And we see this that uh, as he departs, he allocates these goods according to their several abilities. And there is the challenge of uh, believers where we compare ourselves with ourselves. And Paul says, you comparing yourselves with yourselves are not wise. And we find ourselves saying, because I don't have such and such. Because I don't have equipment, because I don't have the right education, I don't have the right connections, I'm not the right skin color, I'm not the right age. I can do these things. I want you to know, in spite of your background, there is an allocation of goods that have been given to you. And because your father knows you so well, he knows your several abilities. He knows the abilities he has placed in you in order for you to use those abilities for kingdom purpose. And so based off of those abilities, he has allocated goods that commensurate or measure up to those abilities. I used to struggle understanding this. My mother telling me that it is in your songwriting, it is in your, in your music, it is in your music ministry that your money is. And I didn't understand it. And she kept saying, God has empowered you with tools uh, to be able to do ministry and he, through that, will give you the ability to do ministry. You see, we think that uh, 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 the idea of, um, as, as an example, the idea of music as ministry is uh, to be an income source. No. It is supposed to be, uh, uh, to be able to generate enough for you to continue to do it. Because you're not doing it to eat. You're doing it to represent the king. So as you do it, he provides commensurate grace for it, commensurate goods for it. If, it. if there is a need for a digital mixer, he'll provide a digital mixer for it. If there is a need for travel, he'll provide travel for it. If there is a need for you to, to have your belly full, he'll make your belly full. You'll ensure that there is provision for your belly to be full. But all for it to measure up with your several abilities so that you are able to perform your kingdom prerogative, your kingdom purpose so according to the several abilities he gives them varying goods and the trouble of christianity is that we compare how many goods you have amongst pastors when we get to speak with pastors the the the, the kind of questions they ask you is how many are you uh, are you pushing doc how many are you pushing in your church? How many people are in your church? And how many numbers are you seeing? And uh, stuff like that. And you begin to flex muscles. And when, you, uh, when we finish this live stream around 3 or 4 p.m., uh, Stephen Futick goes online. And Elevation Church is now streaming to 17 locations or 35 locations. And you're streaming to one. And that one you've got 20 people on. And you begin to compare yourself with another. Compare yourself with somebody else and begin to think that you may not have what it takes. You don't have enough. And, uh, or maybe... Uh, uh, God is not answering you like he's answering him or like he's answering her. And you wonder, why is it that my release and their release or my project and their project, my business and their business is not matching up? 
and not realize often it is because we are misaligned with the goods that befall us. Sometimes you're not, you're not operating at the potential and the, uh, the at optimum level because you have no clue what portion of goods fall to you. And just because you heard we are part of the same faith, you want the portion of goods that fall to Tiani. And because you're trying to fulfill God's purpose through Tiani, through Tiani's grace, through Tiani's goods, you find yourself falling short and not know that at the backdrop of Tiani, he's an architect. He's a software engineer. And you're wondering how is he figuring out the streaming thing? When I'm just a lawyer, I'm just a doctor. But understanding that there is a portion of goods that fall to me and, and fu fully coming alive to that, fully becoming aware of that by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, you begin to yield to God at optimum level and begin to see yourself operate in a way that brings about a hundredfold. And here is the crazy thing that uh, the opportunity presented to you today, I'm going to work this te text just now. The opportunity presented to you today is the same opportunity presented to me today. You may be pulling a thousand doc, or you may be pulling 20 doc, or you may be pulling uh, a few hundreds, or you may be pulling a few thousands, or uh, a, a lot. You may be pulling uh, an infinite number, or a, uh, 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 an infinitesimal number. But the truth of the matter is, when you read this, you realize that the opportunity given to all of us is an equal opportunity. I may have one talent, you may have two talents, she may have five talents, but the opportunity to serve, the opportunity to represent the kingdom of God, the opportunity to advance God's purpose is equal. They may be called to be an apostle, they may be called to be a prophet, you may be called to be an evangelist, they may be called to be a teacher, you may be just a pastor, or none of the above, you just have been called to the ministry of helps. But no matter what office they occupy, what seat they occupy in the church, whether they have the lapel mic and you have the camera, or whether they have the piano, you have the drums, or whether they have the piano, you have the mic, or they have the piano and you sit at the back, all of us have an equal opportunity to represent the kingdom of God. Because at the end of the day, when you look at this illustration from Jesus, the one who had five talents understood that what I have been given, I've been given this anointing. I've been given these goods. I've been given these giftings. I've been given these uh, talents for function. That I may function to the end that I fulfill the purpose of God in the earth. Not just fill, feed my belly. Not just leave an inheritance for my children. But fulfill kingdom purpose. And the one who had five talents understood it. Did not keep the talent he got the same, but develop that thing. Work that thing. I wish, you, I, I wish you could put in the comments, work that thing. Work that thing. And uh, as he worked that thing, we see that he garnered a hundredfold. Listen, there's grace for you when you yield to God, when you yield to what God has done for you, when you yield to what Christ has given you, the access we have through Christ. When you yield to it fully, you have the anointing, Clavotello, for a hundredfold. When your faith meets the goods that fall for you, when your faith meets the grace of God that falls for you, when your faith meets with the word of God, aligns with the word of God, you've aligned with the ability and the opportunity for a hundredfold. I told you, it's an equal opportunity. The one who had five brought in a hundredfold. The one who had two brought in a hundredfold. But did you notice the response of the master? The one who brought five multiplied 
the, the master says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. You have been faithful over a few things. I will now make you ruler over much. Wait a minute, doc. You gave him five. You gave him two. You gave me one. And you're telling the one with the most. You have been faithful over a few things. In spite of what portion of goods. In spite of what you think has been given to you. No matter how big it is. No matter how much it is. It is a few things. He says to the one with the most, you've been faithful over a few things. I will now make you ruler over much. And as he enters into the joy of the Lord, come on, somebody put in the comments, step into the joy of the Lord. You can only step into the joy of the Lord when you fully yield to what God has done for you. The one who got two came up and said, Master, I also got a hundredfold. And what does the master say? Well done. Same script. Rewind. Play again. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. The one who had five and the one who had two received the same response. You have been faithful over a few things. To you who are asking God for more. You who are saying, God, I did not receive enough. You who are saying, God, I don't have enough. I don't have enough connections. I don't have enough choices. I don't have enough options. I don't, I don't have the money that, that I need. I don't have the gear that I need. I don't have the people that I need. You who are saying you don't have enough. God is saying, what you have is already enough. Because the one you envy, the one you think has more, God calls what he has a few things. How can you who are complaining that you, have, you don't have enough be responsible over many things when you cannot identify the few things? How can you be a custodian of many things if you cannot be faithful over a few things? Too many people want better. Too many people want a better relationship, a better man, a better woman, better money, uh, better accounts, uh, better friends, but they are not good at the little they have. First of all, you're not good to you. You're not good for you. The choices you make are not good for you. The choices you make are not good to you. And you expect to be better for somebody else. You expect to, to receive better, a better relationship. And said, I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent. Many of you have hidden talents. Many of you are hiding what God has given you. Hiding under, uh, uh, under the excuse, I'm still praying about it. Hiding under the, uh, the excuse, I'm waiting on God to say something. God has already given you the talent. He's already given you the goods. And you're still waiting on God to say something again. Why did you think he gave you the goods? Why did he give you the talent if he, if he needed you to wait? He would, he would have made you wait and then get, gave it to you when you thought you were ready. Many of you have hidden talents. The reason why the faith of Christianity in many streets is whitewashed is because believers have hidden talents. When I say hidden talents, I'm not saying you are just, uh, uh, you've got talents that we don't know. No, you literally are hiding them. You don't want anybody to know. You don't want anybody to know you're a believer. You don't want anybody to know you've got power to heal the sick. You don't want anybody to know that the one who's coughing in the other room, you can lay hands on them and they can be delivered. You don't want them to know. You are too afraid. You are afraid, so you are hiding the talent. Do you see that in in verse 25? You are afraid and you're hiding the talent. And yet your neighbor is sick unto death. And you've got the talent, the power, the goods to lay hands on them and they will be delivered. But you're too afraid. You're hiding the talent. You know, when the scripture says you're hiding the talent in the earth, what is it saying, Mabong? You're hiding your talent in the flesh. 
You're hiding what God gave you. Giving the excuse of the flesh in the place of the talent God gave you. Giving the excuse of the flesh. Letting your flesh cover what God gave you. The power God gave you. Young man, saying that uh, uh, I stammer and uh, I, uh, I'm shy. And God has given you a revelation. Huh? I, I'm shy and, uh, and I stammer. God gave you a revelation. Every time you open your mouth wide, you, 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 you reveal the deeper things of God. But you can only reveal them when you're on Zoom. Step out of your comfort zone. And yield to what God has given you. Because God has given you what? An equal opportunity. The same opportunity that the one with the 100,000 has. Is the same opportunity that you have with two. Now I want to show you this. Um, in the kingdom of God, the uh, layers or the uh, progressions, if you like. I told you last week that there are people who just love Jesus. They just love Jesus. But they don't know why. They just love Jesus. They love hanging with Jesus. They love going where Jesus is going. But they don't do what Jesus is doing. They love Jesus. They'll hang with him as he heals the sick. As the woman with the issue of blood touches him, they hang with him, they brush him, they touch him. So much so that the disciples can account so many people touched you. We don't know who touched you. They're touching him and nothing is changing in them because they just love Jesus. Just love hanging with Jesus. Hidden talents. It's okay to love Jesus. It's okay to follow Jesus where he's going. But it's another thing to do what Jesus is doing. It's another thing to touch Jesus. Not just brush shoulders with him and just see him pass by. Savior, Savior, do not pass me by. Every time you're saying, Savior, Savior, do not pass me by. And you watch him pass. Savior, Savior, do not pass me by. And you watch him pass. So there are progressions. Levels, if you will. And the rudiment level Of the kingdom is this one. We read in uh, we read in uh, in John chapter one from verse twelve that uh, uh, whosoever believed in him, he gave them power to be called the sons of God. Right, clever term. Yeah. By faith, by belief, we become sons. Yeah. By believing, we become alive to the law of the spirit of life in Christ, and therefore become sons. So by default, when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, you were elevated from creature to son. All who believed, he gave them power to become sons. Say, I've got the power. I wish you could put in the comments, I've got the power to be a son. I've got the power. Yeah, I've got the power to become a son. So you are a son of God. You are a child of God. So by default, when I said yes to Jesus, when you said yes to Jesus, you became a son. That's the default state of grace. You are a son. But then, in the kingdom, there are progressions. Because when you read Galatians, chapter 4 and 1, he says, now... I say unto you, an heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a slave, from a servant. That means that even though you said yes to Jesus, even though you believed, even though you were transliterated, even though you were transformed, even though you were transfigured into a son, if you remain, remain a baby, you only have what kind of, what kind of access? Servant access. As long as you remain a baby, you will always or only have servant access. Because you cannot trust a baby. You cannot trust a baby with air level stuff. In Clavotel, you can't trust a baby with a trust fund. You can't trust a baby with businesses. You can't trust a baby with operational uh, uh, access. 
You cannot. Because all a baby wants is to play baby. The Hebrew writer says, you ought to have been teachers by now, but you are still babies desiring the milk of the word. The reason why there is no true transformation in the world is because believers come with milk only. All we bring to the table is milk and not realize that the goods that have been given to you go beyond milk. Milk is rudimentary. You started milk, yes, but all you have been, been given is not just milk. And so we understand that the, in the progression, you started what? Subject. You started, started what? Slave. You started what? Servant. Because an heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a slave. Though he may be master of all. I can do all things through Christ by faith. But I'm a babe. So I can't exactly wield that sword yet. Because let, lest I yield, I wield the sword, slaughter something that caused me to feel like or think I am God now. That I'm now doing this by my own might. Oh, wield the sword, as my wife says, and kill yourself. You are a baby. That's why when you learn to use swords, you start at sparing where you spar with the wooden ones. Because you might just kill yourself. Step on it and kill yourself. Pull it out and slice yourself. Because we understand this, that to whom much is given, much is required. And so you started what? Subject. What is a subject? What is a servant? What is a slave? Somebody who has no say. Somebody who, whose only answer is yes, unless no is required. His only answer is yes, master, unless no is required. Somebody who is totally, fully submitted to everything that his master asks him to do. That means that this person is committed to subject themselves under the power and influence of the master. So they are an instrument in the master's hands. They can be trusted. If the master says go, they go. If the master says come, you come. As, uh, uh, now, 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 as you grow in this progression, as you grow in this progression, you who are watching online, what begins to happen, the more is given to you by way of instruction, by God's word, and the more you yield to it, the more you can be trusted. To whom much is given, Jesus says it, to whom much is given, much is required. As you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you charge over many. So when you are faithful over a few, you get access to more. Now as you, from a subject level, begin to yield yourself fully to God. Because many of us have been in the faith for too long. We've been in faith for many years. You say, since 1991, since 1985. I've been saved. I was baptized in 1991, but still a subject. Still a slave. Still operating at seventh level. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. I'm blessed and highly favored, but I'm a baby. Let me show you that Jesus, blessed and highly favored, savior of the world, he's a baby. Could not save himself. The angel of the Lord and say, take the baby and flee to Egypt. Though he be Lord over all, though he be king of kings and lord of lords, though he be Yeshua Hamashiach, savior of the world, right now, though he be the fullness of the Godhead bodily, right now he's a baby. Take the baby, flee to Egypt. Many of us have been saved too long, but we are a baby. That's why even the flu terrorizes us. A cough terrorizes us. 
A headache terrorizes us. To the point they'll say, I, 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 am, I, I am epileptic. It's a part of who you are. You even believe it's who you are and you're a child of God because you are a baby. So as you begin to yield and begin to submit yourself to the point that you become a subject, you become subject to God. Uh, you cease to be subject to the flesh. You begin to become sub subject uh, to the law of the spirit of life and begin to yield yourself and say, I am bent on fulfilling my father's will. I'm bent on ensuring everything God says I am, I become. I'm bent on going everywhere my father says go. I'm bent on doing whatsoever my father says do. As you begin to do that, you begin to see over time that you begin to develop into a steward. From servant to steward. What is a steward? A custodian of something. That does not necessarily belong to them. But they keep it. They enlarge it. They grow it until the, the master comes. Somebody who can be trusted with more. Somebody like Eliezer, who though he is a servant, can be given nine camel with all kinds of precious goods. Say, go fetch a wife for my son. Can be given more talents. To say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've given you power. That whomsoever believes in me, the works that I do, John 14 and 12, shall he do also and even greater works than this. And many of us cannot see greater works because we cannot be trusted with more. It's accessible, it's free, it's an equal opportunity, but because you are not willing to step up to the play. I'm talking about maturity, people. If you have not got me by now, I'm talking about maturity. Not remaining a baby in Christ. Now, when you begin to yield to God on a steward level, have you noticed when you were a baby, you, you, were, you could not even be trusted with taking the sugar container back to the kitchen? When you were a baby? No. Because you would take that and you would go as if you're going to the kitchen and you're out the door. And you'd be silent for a long time. And they'll look for you everywhere and not find you. But when they find you, you are sick to your tummy because you ate almost all the sugar. But as you grew, when you were young, they would say, don't touch the fridge. Don't open the fridge when I'm gone. Because you are too much of a baby, you can't be trusted with more. But as you grow, don't forget to start the fire and put water on the fire. And when that water is done, cook some pup. Make lunch for your brothers. Make lunch for your, for your family members. They're coming from work. Tired. As you grow instead, yes, you're still a child. Yes. But you are being entrusted with steward level stuff. You're being made a custodian of certain things. That when something gets finished, they ask you now. Do you know about this? Because you are responsible over it. And if you can be a steward, You are on your way to access to sun level stuff. You're on your way to access to air level stuff. Let me show you an example. Jesus says in another, in another parable, in another passage, in another parable, two sons, come, uh, one son, the younger one, comes to the father, the younger one. He says, give me the portion of goods that fall unto me. And what did the father do? He divided his goods amongst them. Equal opportunity. You want your goods now? Here's your goods now. As a matter of fact, even though you are a baby, you already have your goods. It's not like you're going to get them later. You already have your goods. And how you respond, I started by this, how you respond to the goods you've received determine where you end off. He takes his goods and he goes and squanders them off. When when you, have, when you can be trusted on a subject level and can be trusted on a steward level, I'm teaching. I think I'm teaching good. Yes, sir. You are ready to wield the power of an heir. 
to harness the power of a name. Because a son, an heir, executes his father's will. Knows his father's will, executes his father's will, wheresoever he is. When he speak, speaks, his father speaks. That's why if he can bind a thing on the earth, it is bound in heaven. If he sets it loose on the earth, it is loosed in heaven. He echoes heaven in his speech. He echoes heaven in his ways. He echoes heaven in the way he walks, in the way he talks, in who he associates with. When you look at him, you see heaven. When you hear him speak, you, you hear heaven. That's why everywhere you go, you leave a trail of liberation. A trail of reconciliation, reconciling the world back to God. Everyone you bump into, you introduce them to the concept of reconciliation with God. A son executes his father's will because he carries his father's name and is an heir of his father. If heirs, then joint heirs with Christ. If joint heirs, then heirs of God. Now, what are we saying? Sonship is proven by growth. Sonship is qualified by growth. Too many bastards, too many vagabonds claiming sonship and being played like a yo-yo with devils, like the sons of Skeva. Sonship is proven by growth. When you were a child, you were just a subject. I'm done. And as you were growing in wisdom and in stature, more was entrusted to you. And you became a steward of more, custodian of more. God, God is telling us in the past two months, we're in the season for the great revival. Can you be entrusted with the great revival? Can you be entrusted with more? And the more faithful you become as a steward, the more is entrusted to you. And the Lord, I hear the Lord say, now that you are of age, I acknowledge you as my heir. Put my stamp on you. This is my son, whom I am well pleased. Because even when he was a baby, he reasoned like a baby. As he was growing, he's 12 years and arguing with the doctors of law. But here he is now, telling John, you ought to dip me in the water. I'm about my father's will now. I know we're cousins. I know you know me. I know you know. I know I'm younger than you. I know I'm greater than you. But you ought to dip me in the water. I have to fulfill my father's will. And as he's dipped in the water, as he comes out, the spirit of the Lord descends upon him like unto a dove. And then the voice of God is heard, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. God puts a stamp on him. I came to tell you this this morning, do not waste the grace of God concerning you. Do not waste the grace of sonship because you refuse to grow up. Do not waste the grace of sonship because you refuse to grow up. What are you saying, man of God? Disobedience inhibits growth. When you are disobedient, you stop your growth. You can't grow being disobedient. Because the only growth you can experience when you're disobedient is rebellion. You only grow in rebellion. In rebelliousness. So disobedience inhibits growth. I'm done. It was a teaching today. Disobedience inhibits growth and lack of accountability proves unbelief. Can I say that again? Lack of accountability proves unbelief. When you cannot be accountable to God for the goods that fall for you, that fall to you, 
when you cannot be accountable for the power at work in you, when you cannot be accountable for the Holy Spirit that has been given to you, when you cannot be accountable for the grace that is at work in you, you only prove you are an unbeliever. You don't believe. All things that pertain to life and godliness were given to you. That's why you act the way you act. That's why you talk the way you talk. That's why you talk like an uncouth, undisciplined, untaught, unruly child. Because you don't even know. You don't even hold what you've been given. You don't, you don't even hold your identity as a son with, a, with any regard at all. So lack of accountability proves unbelief. Your lack of accountability proves you're an unbeliever. You're an unbelieving believer. You're only a believer because you mark the register, Jesus come into my heart, but everything else you don't do. Last one. Reckless living proves untrustworthiness. Living recklessly. Making reckless choices. Bending with reckless people. Recklessness. You're synonymous with recklessness. Like a little baby. You're a man of age who claims to be a believer. But you have children everywhere. You are known everywhere. In every part of your neighborhood, you are known for being reckless. Only proving you cannot be trusted. You may know scripture. But if you're reckless, you can't be trusted. This is the crux of the matter. We must have the humbleness, the willingness, the servitude of a subject. We all must. Knowing that it's a privilege to be here. Jesus says, when you are done with everything, say not unto us, but unto you. We are, all, we, we, we are only but your servants, but unto you. Deflect all glory to God so that you don't take it for yourself. So we must have the humbleness, the willingness, the servitude of subjects, knowing that it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to serve. It's a privilege to come to you and speak to you like this. It's a privilege to serve on the piano. It's a privilege to serve on the drums. It's a privilege to live stream to you. It's a privilege to, to, to share this word with you. It's a privilege to, to share in worship. It's a privilege. So you must have the humbleness and the willingness and the servitude of a subject. Serving like your life depends on it. It's a privilege. And to add to that, you must have the faithfulness and the obedience of a steward. One who can be trusted with more. If you can have the humbleness, the willingness, and the servitude of a subject, and if you can build up under you the faithfulness and the obedience of a steward, then you can get gl gladly grasp or grab the confidence of sonship. And we will see you be one that is as the one that the prophet calls a man that knew God and therefore does great exploits because he knows his God. He knows his father. And you cannot know your father unless you're willing to be humble. You're willing to be humble and to be willing and to have the servitude of a servant. The servitude of a, uh, a subject. Understanding it's a privilege to worship you. It's a privilege to stand in your presence. It's a privilege to be called by you. It's a privilege to be loved by you. It's a privilege, privilege to be used by you. It's a privilege to have access to the portion of goods that fall to me. It's a privilege to even have goods be given to me. It's a privilege to have life and godliness given to me. It's a privilege to have grace given to me. It's a privilege to have faith, a measure of faith unto everyone. He has dealt a measure of faith. To have a measure of faith dealt to me. It's a privilege. That's why we ought to carry ourselves with the faithfulness and the obedience of a steward. In order for us to be emboldened and to walk in the confidence of sonship. 
so that when you see a devil and you say, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The devil does not say, Paul is registered as a prisoner of hope. Paul is registered as an apostle. Paul is registered as a believer. Paul is registered as a soul winner. Paul is registered as a man who understands how to maximize his equal opportunity. And Christ, we know. But who are you? Because you have the tentacles and the traits of a baby. A novice. Mafikizol. Sevens, subjects, stewards, and sons. Do you have the blind obedience of a servant? Do you have the consistency and the faithfulness of a steward? In order for you to carry yourself with the confidence of a son. You are a son. Don't get it twisted. You are a son. But can you be entrusted with more? Can you carry more? Can we look at what you have received and fully be in agreement with your excuses? That is because you don't have more. Come to ask you to stop blaming your education, your parents who are long dead and gone, who can answer for themselves. And you are blaming them. You're blaming your long lost aunt who told your great grandfather that no one in your family will make it. And you're carrying that story over and over. And you're blaming where you are on that story. Cognitive dissonance, ignorance of a baby. I came to tell you to let go of the excuses. Let go of every excuse. It's time for you to grow up. Can you put that in the comments? It's time for me. Right, it's time for me to grow up. Oh, God has entrusted you with more. Do you know that Jesus is not coming for a sleeping church? Jesus is not coming for a church that's folding hands. Jesus is not coming for a church that's sitting down. He's not coming for a church that's afraid. A church that's toying, to toy toying on the street with the toy toyers. He's coming for a church that supersedes the early church. Because it says the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. They had shadows healing people. Raising the dead. Getting bitten by serpents. And nothing happening to them. What are you doing? What do you have? What can you show for your sonship? You're a son, right? What can you show for your sonship? Put it in the comments again. It's time for me to grow up. God is calling me to grow up. I wrote a song once that says, uh, uh, you're calling me to grow up. To live a life beyond my own. To live a life beyond myself. To live a life beyond Satisfying me, fulfilling me, satisfying my belly, satisfying my mind, satisfying my cravings, satisfying my desires. You're calling me to grow. It is a calling. God is calling you. Grow up. I've given you so much, but you can only access it when you grow up. See, until you're 18, until you're of legal age, there's certain things you cannot access. They may be given to you. People will ill-treat you. Uh, they will trample on you. They will treat you like you are just an orphan. You are worth nothing until you turn 18 and you hear the call come from the attorney saying, Hello, there's a portion of goods that fall to you that were given to you already. They were yours already. You need to come through. But you ought to be of age to access adult level power to have adult level access. It's time for you to grow up.
It's time for us to grow up. God is calling us to growth. God is calling us to growth. Oh, to thee I yield myself, surrendering to your great will. You are calling me to let go of me, rendering my all to thee. Just to be like you, Jesus, is all I want to be. Just to be like you, Jesus, is all I want to be. Just to be, just to be like you, Jesus. Is all I wanna be Just to be Just to be Like a Jesus Is all I wanna be Just to be Like a Jesus Is all I wanna be All I wanna, all I wanna be just to be like a Jesus is all I wanna be. All I wanna be, all I, all I wanna be. You're all I wanna be, Jesus. You're all I wanna be. All I'm living for oh, yeah. to adore you, Jesus. To adore you, Jesus, is all I'm living for. To adore you, to adore you, Jesus. To adore, living a life that adores you, is all I'm living for. To adore you, to adore you, Jesus. To adore you, Jesus, is all I'm living for. To adore you, Jesus, to adore you, Jesus, to adore you, Jesus, is all I'm living for. This is our desire and this is the cry of our hearts that we fully come alive to the truth of your word that we grow in your grace that we do not frustrate your grace but that we grow in your grace wherewith you loved us and understand that you've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and begin to yield to you to the end that we grow in the things of God we grow in our knowledge of you Ah, that we may truly come alive to the truth of your word. Oh God, that when all is said and done, we come before you presenting a hundredfold. That for everything you did for me, for everything you gave me, I multiplied that. 
I worked the thing. I grew the thing. I grew in your grace to the end that salvation occurred. I grew in your grace to the end that liberation occurred, transformation occurred, reconciling the world unto you. And trusting even others, committing them to the ministry of reconciliation. Just to be like Jesus is all I'm living for. Just to be like Jesus is all I'm living for. One more time. Just to be like Jesus is all I'm living for. Just to be, just to be like Jesus is all I'm living for. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for cautioning us. We bless the Lord for guiding us. We bless the Lord for reminding us that we cannot sleep on the job. We cannot fold hands. We cannot uh, remain babies. We cannot remain where he found us. Yay! I am so glad that you did not leave me where you found me, but that you empowered me to grow in your grace. This is all we are living for. This is the cry of our hearts. This is the desire of our lives. This is the posture of our lives. To you who have been watching online, we pray that this challenges you and charges you to grow in the grace of God, to not frustrate the grace of God, not quench the Holy Spirit that resides in you, but to yield to God and to yield to the teachings of the Holy Spirit and the remembrance, the remindings, the memories, the flashbacks of the Holy Spirit as it reminds you of the things that Christ taught, that you may grow in the grace of God and in the knowledge of Him. To the end that you become everything he called you to be. To the glory of the Father. In the name of Jesus. That at the end of the day. You will hear him say well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. And I will make you ruler over much. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. That's what you ought to be leaving for. Family, we love you so much and we honor you. We thank you for spending time with us. We pray that this challenged you, this blessed you, this moved you from lethargy, from slumber, from lukewarmness, from coldness, from neither being cold or hot. And it has uh, 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 placed you back on track to fully come, coming alive to the truth of God's word, to understand that you ought to have the humbleness and the willingness and the servitude of a subject. Ah, and the obedience and the faithfulness of a steward in order for you to fully harness the confidence of sonship. Oh, glory to God. You're a son of God, you're a child of God. If you're saved, if you're not saved, you don't know Jesus like this. Pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, I realize I have made you too small in my own view. I've made my assignment too small because of my excuses. But I let go of those excuses. I let go of that little mindedness. And I fully come alive to the truth of your word. To the call you have upon me to grow in your grace. And therefore, Lord Jesus, I, de I declare my life is yours. My heart is yours. Use me, as you can. Use me as you can. You can trust me, you can trust me. To, yield to, you to yield to you as I, as, as I listen and follow as I listen and, and follow obey, and obey the, prompts of your spirit. the prompts of your spirit. I want to live to be trusted. I want to, live to, be trusted. To, be trusted to be trusted for more. To be entrusted with more. To be, to be a faithful steward. To be a faithful steward. Yes. A faithful son the glory of your name Lord Jesus I have prayed Amen. If you have prayed that prayer you are on a trajectory now you are on track to growth and you ought to take it serious the words you have just declared 
and begin to grow in the grace of God. We love you so much and we thank you for spending time with us. We we hope to see you on Tuesday uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, uh, if you go to join.churchextended.com forward slash mx that is for marriage works if you are single and you're 18 years and above and if, if somebody is whispering in your ears if you like somebody and you think you want to grow with them and um, if you're married and you're struggling if you're married and you're happy if you're newly married if you have been married for years and uh, if you are divorced or if you have been hurt and um, uh, if you are in doubt, but you desire marriage, a good marriage, you ought to come through. Join.churchextended.com forward slash MX. It's a great time in the presence of the Lord as we hear the heart of God concerning marriage. So marriage works Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And on Wednesday, we will be back with, um, I almost said on purpose, we will be back with uh, Extension Night uh, at 7 p.m right over our facebook page facebook.com forward slash church extended you'll be able to see it every wednesday 7 p.m and um the most important announcement today is that starting sunday next week we are all back in the building everyone is back and we are anticipating the move of the holy spirit and the move of god in a supernatural way if you have not registered for sunday it is important that you register it's free to do so but you ought to do so register it helps us to to be in keeping with uh, health regulations it has nothing to do with anything but just to keep to be in keeping with uh, health regulations you ought to go to uh, join dot church extended i think you should be able to see it on your screen join dot church extended dot com forward slash sunday join dot church extended dot com forward slash sunday it's free to register but it is important that we have your details if you've been watching church extended online and you live in Houghton, or you live within the area and you've been watching online it is a great thing for you to come join us come join us in person would like to get to meet you get to know you and grow together in the grace of god so we're looking forward to seeing you on sunday in person on the 15th of this month invite a friend invite somebody i know spaces are limited but it rather we have no space than have space because you were afraid to invite somebody invite a friend all covid uh, pro protocols all health protocols rather let me not say covid pro protocols all health protocols will be fully in uh, in operation so uh, you will expect to uh, to experience social distancing uh, the wearing of your the strict wearing of your masks and sanitizing stations and we respect you, we care for your health, but we're looking forward to seeing you this Sunday. It's going to be a great time in the presence of the Lord as we worship together the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. We love you so much, and we hope to see you on Sunday in person. The Lord wills for it and has empowered us for it. So let us see you on Sunday. We love you so much, and we pray that you have a great afternoon and that you have a great week ahead. I know it's a holiday coming up, the public holiday. Be careful on the road. Uh, take care of yourself. Don't don't behave like a baby. In a nutshell, <laughs> you have been entrusted with more. We love you. Have a great afternoon, Father. God bless you. <laughs>